If you're a natural born marketer, you're one lucky son of a gun. If you're like most people, marketing, especially online marketing, is about as appealing as standing in a police lineup. The May Create team of creatives has transformed websites and digital marketing from craptastic to fantastic since 2005. Our podcast, Marketing with Purpose, makes sense of marketing so you can make purposeful decisions instead of carrying on with the same old crap you've been doing. And now your host, Monica Pitts, founder of May Create, with another episode on how to make your marketing not suck. I couldn't decide whether I was going to say hello or good day or what to greet <laughs> I everybody. said good day. Good day. <laughs> good day, everyone. Good day. This is Monica Pitts. And this is Katie Gwen. And you're listening to Marketing with Purpose. Today, we are digging into one of the big six. Oh, the big six include website, email marketing, paid online ads, social media, blogging, and directory listings. These are items that we consider digital or online marketing. Mm -hmm. Today, we are focusing on email marketing, and our goal is to do a little bit of buffing the chip off of your shoulder towards email marketing. Yeah, buff that chip. Buffing the chip. (laughs) It's time. (laughs) And then... We're also going to cover our three golden rules to running a successful email campaign. And at the end, we're going to tell you about the tools that we use here at MayCreate to make email marketing efficient. I'm in. Good. <laughs> Let's get started. So the reason that we said we were going to start off by buffing the chip off of your shoulder is I talk to people every day about their online marketing and the amount of resistance that I get towards email marketing is actually astonishing to me because <laughs> I thought that everybody did email marketing because we did email marketing. And then when we started advising people on their online marketing, people were like, no, I am not sending emails because they're an invasion of people's inboxes and it's just rude and I don't want to interrupt them and be rude. And I have to take a step back for a second and say, what is it that you are putting in your email that's going to make it rude? (laughs) The only reason that your emails would suck is because you make them suck. <laughs> and you know what? Not sucking. I heard that works pretty well. Yeah, it's a new it's a new concept. <laughs> Don't send people junk. You can actually send them something that's worthwhile. <laughs> It's a new concept and it actually really does work. It's called not sucking. Yes. Think about your own inbox. When your favorite store emails you a 20% off coupon, are you? is it junk? <laughs> I'm not mad about it. I'm not either. I mean, I choose whether or not I get to open it and sometimes... I delete it and sometimes I use it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... So the line between junk and good content is just drawn by the value a recipient gets from an email. And I don't say that everyone has to do email marketing. That's that's not what I'm saying. As I review the big picture of an online marketing campaign, I take into account the other activities that a client might be engaging in. For example, if you're blogging or if you're offering regular promotions, if you're updating your website with projects, if you're putting jobs, careers that are available with your company up on your website regularly, or if you host events, these are all things that you're continually updating your website with. Now, let's say you don't do any email marketing. How often, Katie, do you just go out to other people's websites (laughs) And, and check for new content? Yeah. Oh, um, unless it's weather.com, never. So weather.com <laughs> does not need to send emails to people. No. Weather's happening every day. We're pretty sure yeah. that everybody else does, though. <laughs> yeah. If you right. are regularly updating your website with content. Right. <laughs> it's kind of a no-brainer. You put this new content out there, and then you remind people to come back to your website and read it. They started on your website because they found interest in something that you were offering, and you are allowing them another way to keep in touch with your company. Mm-hmm. And there is a very easy way to do this that speeds things up tremendously. We're going to talk about that in our three golden nuggets of success. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that's what I called them earlier. Yeah, go, nugget. if not, they're nuggets now. Whatever, they're nuggets now. Okay. (laughs) Regardless of what you're doing now, like maybe you're never planning to send a single email to anyone. I still think that you need to collect email addresses. Mm -hmm. Like collect them now. Worry about what you're going to do with them later. And Well, if you're just starting, start digitally. Oh, for sure. (laughs) Because you'd be surprised. I I think Monica might have a story on (laughs) it. Yeah. But email addresses are currency, right? Like you, you exchange your email address for being able to go in and view specials on a website or download a free offering. It's 
Yeah. I mean, they're currency. Mm -hmm. One day I had a client come in. They've been in business for, I don't even know how long. I think it had been like 70 years because they took it over from their dad. They'd been in business forever. And I said, oh my goodness, you guys have so much past business. We absolutely just need to run a really low key email campaign to get in contact with people and remind them of what you do. And they're like, that's great. And I said, okay, do you have email addresses for people? And they said, yeah, I've got them all on carbon copy receipts in boxes in my garage. <laughs> garage? Yes. Ew. It's not even climate controlled. <laughs> that, that is a whole nother challenge. And that's why Katie's suggesting that you put these things together digitally because I am 100% sure that there have been a time or two that she has had to type all of the email addresses Ugh. from a client Ugh. into an Excel spreadsheet so she can upload it into an email marketing software and send it. So painful. It is. Don't make and you, don't, don't do it and don't make other people do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and here's the trick though. Let's say that you don't want to do regular email marketing. That's not something that you want to do. I guarantee there's going to be a time in your business when you need to reach out and contact your client list. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going to raise your rates. Maybe you're going to move your office. Maybe you're closing your business and or you sold it to somebody and you're going to transfer these clients over to somebody else. You need to be able to contact them. If you don't have a digital list of these people, it's going to take you hours, if not days, to compile this list. And you might have to call every single one of these human yeah. beings to get their emails yeah. from them, which in that case, you're just going to You may as well just tell them right? on the phone at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh, geez. That oh, just took it to just a call them all individually. Suck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the takeaway there? Collect your, <laughs> your collect your email addresses mm -hmm. digitally. Collect you email never addresses know. now. You never know. Digitally. Worry about what you're going to do with them later. Right. <laughs> On to our three golden rules. These are the things that I make sure happen in every single email campaign that we run. These are big picture rules. We will go into intricate rules for email marketing in another podcast. <laughs> Right now, though, let's talk about the three big picture rules. The first one. The number one reason people don't email market is because they're afraid they're going to spam people. Yeah. So what you do is you don't spam people. <laughs> See, that, that's stupid. She said it like a pro. Yeah, just, just don't do it. And when we're talking about spamming people, we mean don't buy a list. Like if I didn't give you my email address and you're sending me emails, I get mad. So that's one way to spam people. Um, and you don't just put a bunch of emails on a list from, you know, some random place you've gone or so, you know. Yes. There's a lot of people who do trade trade shows. Oh God, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. They do trade shows and they're trying to gather contact information from people. And so they put out the fishbowl where they're like, hey, put in your business card to win a Wii. <laughs> 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 as like an as like a antique, <laughs> as like a. <laughs> Do you remember though when like the Wii was like the thing that people gave yes. away at trade shows? Oh my gosh! Yeah, now uh, what do they give away? Um, iPads or cordless phone chargers. No. So <laughs> you would know. put your business card in? No. Um, no, socks. Socks. <gasps> Patterned. I love it when they give away socks. Patterned socks, as I call them. <laughs> I love it when people give away socks anyway, and water bottles. Right? Mm -hmm. They're the best. Okay, so let's say that you have a fishbowl and people put their business cards in to get a water bottle. All right. Mm -hmm. Then they take that all those business cards and they put all these emails into a list and you just start emailing all the people on the list. Yeah, just because I wanted your water bottle does not mean I want to opt into your email list. Let's right. get clear here. Do not do that to people. I mean, unless you tell them and they say that's okay. But exactly. that's really the only way that would work. Exactly. Make sure that people can opt out of your emails when you put them in your list. Mm -hmm. And... The only time that I would say that it is appropriate to send out an email to a big group of people after an event is to ask them, and notice I use the word ask, mm -hmm. if they would like to join your email list. So let's say you got all those business cards out of the fishbowl. You send them an email and you say, hey, it was great meeting you at this trade show. I'd love to keep in touch with you. We offer great tips about marketing on our website. Would you like to join our email list? And they can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. You may send one tops two of those emails, and then you need to be done. Yeah, that's it. That's other, you're just like annoying at that mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. if you're going over and beyond. Yeah. Golden rule number two. <laughs> Take it away, Katie. Make friends. Be nice. 
Offer treats. <laughs> Offer your friends treats. Be nice to your friends. I mean, that's it. I mean, again, it's just as simple as not spamming them. You want to be nice to them. Show them that you care. Let them know that you know who they are. Right. And they're not just a, a, an email address or a number or anything. They're just, they're people that you care about. So you're going to like knock on their door and offer a gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free apple pie because who knows what kind of food intolerance they might have. Shows you care. Or better yet, you could shovel their driveway. Oh. I mean, it's really easy to make friends around here in the winter if you've got a snowblower. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Dang easy. I love those people. So think about what your new friends might need and share that with them through these emails. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about converting them to your latest mm -hmm. <laughs> pyramid marketing scheme. I knew like, you were going there. <laughs> this is not, that is not being a friend. I realize that you may be like so into this opportunity that you can't wait to share it with everyone, but yeah. that is really not yeah. what people want. Yeah. They don't want to be sold to. They just want to find value in the and, things that you offer. And it's, and it, there's two, there's nothing worse than someone who just jumps right into something like that. But there's also comparably worse is, creeping in with this feigned interest. Like, tell me about yourself. Who are you? And then being like, join my pyramid scheme. So, you know, you can, by be a friend, it is a sustained thing. It's not something that you just do once and then you're like, okay, now, now I'm going to spam the crap out of them. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't work that way. No, it's not. <laughs> you're my friend, so now I'm going to sell you a car. Right. Stop. Yeah, yeah. I don't need a car. <laughs> I just, I thought you were just saying, hey. And last but not least, this was the thing I was talking about e earlier, is that when you are inputting information like like blog posts, promotions, projects, jobs, events into your website, you can automate. That is just the most magical word. Automate your emails to send. Because some people think that every single time that you send out an email, you have to create the entire thing from scratch. And I admit that I was one of those people years ago. Ugh, I've worked as one of those people. I had a person on my staff who 20 hours a week did nothing but create the exact same email promoting different content. Uh, 20 hours? That yes. is, oh. Every single day. Oh, Wow. And then I found MailChimp RSS driven campaigns and it rained oh, Skittles. The heavens opened up and Skittles came pouring down. Yes, I like ran around <laughs> the office and I did the happy dance and I made everyone give me high fives and I, I swooshed my imaginary <laughs> superhero <laughs> cape and it was on. Mm -hmm. oh, it was so awesome. And then I had to sit back and find like another maybe more rewarding job for my human email maker. <laughs> Which was what? She started writing. <laughs> oh, good. I thought you might have said getting coffee or something, but thank goodness. Oh, girl, we get our own coffee around here at Makery. <laughs> it's true. We it's put true. our interns to work. <laughs> <laughs> so here is how this magic works. You publish the information on your website, and then MailChimp checks back in at set intervals you decide. I believe that you can decide if it's daily, immediately, weekly, or monthly. Mm -hmm. And it checks back to see if there's new stuff. And if it finds new stuff, then it automatically formats an email using a pre-made template that you made. And it populates it with the new information in your feed and then sends it out. This sparkling pre-made email to your email list. Mm. And guess what you guess what you did? You just set up a template and uploaded a list. Yes. You just made it happen once. And it I, just, you didn't do anything for that automated email to go out other than that. How long does it take you to set this up for somebody, Katie? Oh, um, you set up an account, you put in information about the account, you upload a list if it's a digital list. Um, mm. And then you create a template. It probably takes about 30 minutes to make a template. And then you set you that's about it. And you set it you, you uh, set up the integration on your website and voila. So it's like a couple hour task. I mean, if, yeah. If you have no idea what you're doing, you might reserve an afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> which again, an afternoon for an, for an endless amount of automated emails, I think is worth it. It's amazing. It, it really is amazing. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that you can set it up so that it pulls the most recent post from your website and puts that in as a subject line. Katie really carefully orchestrates what posts she puts into the website to make sure that the subject line of the email is something that would be enticing or relevant okay. or yeah to the people who are getting that 
that email for the day. Something that provides value. Exactly. I'm just saying. Touching and back on that even, earlier thing. Even if people don't open the email, they saw your company name. Mm-hmm. They saw you and it was essentially an ad in their inbox. Honestly, for your sometimes I'll, I'll sign up for blogs and just the comfort of seeing them, you know, is just, oh, look, they're putting out new stuff. So, I mean, it. Just to the warm fuzzies, knowing that that people I you know interact with are still doing things, it's it's a it's valuable. I mean, when I see a valuable email in my inbox, I am totally like, I will, what? Yeah. Fifteen new hacks yeah. to get into Google Ads. Uh-huh. What? And then we forward it to everyone in the office. It works. <sighs> we make it all. We make everybody read it. It it's works. Great. But you know, which is a great segue mm-hmm. into tools. Mm-hmm. What we use at May Create to make this an efficient process. The first thing that you need to do is put an email sign up. On your site. Yeah. It's hard to get new emails when there's no way to, to sign up, to get people to sign up for them. We've never experienced that firsthand. <laughs> we launched a brand new website. Well, I mean, it's at the same domain. It had the same-ish content. But we redid our whole website. What was it? Like two years ago? Two year and a half ago? Mm-hmm. And we monitor our marketing metrics because we practice what we preach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, three months went by and we were like, this is really weird. Our email signups plateaued. Mm -hmm. They're not going anywhere up in the up direction. And then we thought, do we put an email signup on the site? (laughs) Yeah, that's, I mean, outside of our offering, our offering emails had the opt-in. Yeah. So we so, were getting people. Yeah. But it wasn't at a rate that we were before. And it was because, you know, some t- as humans, <laughs> we Oops. realized we just didn't have anything pulling people in on an email, you know, sign up. So There's a, was, there was just a, a heck of a lot of work yeah. <laughs> moving all the content from our website to the new. It was a humbling Oof, moment. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But now we're getting endless amounts of... <laughs> Of subscribers. So. We do. We get subscribers all the time mm-hmm. now that there's actually an email sign up on our site. And we, yeah, and we're using <laughs> additional tools. Yes. <laughs> We use Formidable Pro um, to sign people up along with a, which is, that is a form building plugin that you can install in WordPress. We use it for so many things. Mm. It's one of our favorites. You can use just regular Formidable. You don't have to have the pro license to let people sign up for your emails. There's also an add-on though that you need to put in, which is the MailChimp add-on to Mm -hmm. allow Formidable to talk to MailChimp. And then you can ask them for specific pieces of information if you need to, to segment people into lists. Mm -hmm. You can, when they sign up, segment them automatically into a list based on what page they signed up on. It's 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 so wonderful. It's wonderful. It is. Um, So speaking of downloads and segmenting lists, one thing I read an article about this, I don't even know, years ago, it was on HubSpot. And this person said, add a checkbox to your downloadable content, your checkout forms, and your email forms on your website to allow people to opt into email signups. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, magic. Yeah. yeah. That was the only thing working for us there for a while. They do it. Like, people really – and I know I do it. I'm like, this is a valuable thing. Sure, I'll take your emails. But if you don't have that checkbox in there, they they won't because they can't. Mm-hmm. Like, ethically, you should ask them if they want to sign up for your email list. Yeah. And I will say just as one quick <laughs> – Caveat to that. Um, If you do set that up, don't have the checkbox automatically checked. That bothers me. I don't know if that bothers you too, but anyway. That's another That's my only note. Yeah, just like don't assume. Don't assume I want your email. No. It's like at McDonald's. Welcome back to McDonald's. You might be right, but don't assume that I'm coming back to see you. Makes me crazy. Anyway. (laughs) I've never been in McDonald's before. Don't be so What is that? Yeah, like what? What is that? Oh, Monica, you're the only people they're talking to. Just kidding. (laughs) No. Just think of that. Just think of that. Anyway. And and people. I think the reason that they start with it checked is because they want to get everybody, even the people that forget to uncheck it on their email list. Mm-hmm. And I disagree with that methodology. I, I feel like too. you want mm-hmm. people who want to be on your email list in your email list. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing worse than someone who's gotten an email they didn't want because now you've got them, those people bad talking you to mm-hmm. their friends because they're like, oh, these people. And no, you don't want to be those, those people. No, you don't want to be those people. Just be cool. Be their friends. Another way to gather email signups on your site is through a pop-up. Now, okay, so I just said pop-up. I can see you rolling your eyes. Yeah, it's a trigger word for a lot of people. Right now. Here's the deal, though. I was reviewing marketing metrics for one of my clients, and I looked at her website, and I was like, how does Melanie, who is... Melanie. Melanie Spradling. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Love her. She's a home Mm -hmm. inspector. 
she was getting email signups every day, like multiple a day. And here I am. I'm like, well, ugh. I mean, my blogs are cooler than Melanie's blogs. <laughs> At least for this, about, I don't know. They're about marketing. Yeah. <laughs> they don't Which apply is, to inspections, but they're still cool. Sorry, Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the example. <laughs> and I, so I looked at the two websites and I said, what is the difference? Like I looked at the two pages and then on Melanie's blog, the sign up for our email list pop-up came up and it, what? Yes, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. So we put that sign up for our email list pop up on our website and we're continually putting it up and taking it down as we decide if we really want to be those people or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but and ultimately it does it, it does yeah. draw people in. Yes. All right. So don't just discount it. It might be the right thing for you. Mm-hmm. Another tool that we use for ourselves and for our clients, we use email marketing services. The one that we use most often is MailChimp. It's free up to, is it 2,000 subscribers believe, now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And man, that is so great for some of our nonprofits because they, you know, they don't have a big budget. And this is an awesome entry. Now, if you want to do automation, you can't do that with the free plans. All of that RSS automation, we started doing it in MailChimp because they were the only people that offered it at the time. We have also worked a lot with Emma Mm -hmm. and they are, they're so cute. Uh, they're the cutest people. Yeah, I heard that like person-wise, you know, yeah, human-wise. I mean, their marketing is so, so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also, I just read today actually preparing for this podcast that they do offer RSS email integration. I had not physically used it in their system, so I'm not sure how it works, if it works the exact same way as MailChimp does. Also, Constant Contact is one that I've worked in. And in the past, the way that their RSS integration worked is that I had to physically go in, I had to create an email, and then I could pull the content from the website and put it into the email. But that's not actually automation. That's That's, making an email. That sounds like... mm -hmm. It's making an email easier, (laughs) but it's still making an email. Mm -hmm. If you're just going to keep those email addresses, do it it in an Excel spreadsheet, do it in a Google Sheet, whatever way is easiest for you. If we're going to send a one-off email to some of our clients, we use this technique where we use Google Sheets and Gmail and we literally mail merge content to send it out. It creates a super personal email Mm -hmm. and it can be very effective to get people to email you back. And we will talk even more on this in a later podcast. It's a neat technique. Mm -hmm. Every six months or so, you should probably go out to that client email list or that database, if not even more regularly, and update your email list. So Mm -hmm. that way you make sure that it's up to date and frequent. Yep. You don't want to leave anyone out. Yeah. So really, I mean, you should probably stop listening now Yeah, and And start start emailing. Get out there. Start emailing people. How's that chip feeling? Oh, man. It's it's feeling a little rounded out. Smoothed out a little bit. Yeah, I'm feeling smoothie. (laughs) (laughs) Smoothie. You can hop on. Oh my God, I think I actually just like hurt my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very I physical was, job. Like, buffing my shoulder <laughs> while talking. I'm like, oh, I just created. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving um, forward. Right. You can hop on over to makecreate.com forward slash resources. We have a few ebooks on email marketing, getting started in it, reviewing your metrics to see how you're doing. We have multiple, multiple blog posts about it mm-hmm. at, at makecreate.com forward slash blog. All of those resources are free to you. Please use them to help you grow your business. So that's it for today. So once again, this is Monica Pitts with Katie Gwen. Now go forth and market with purpose. Thanks again for listening to Marketing with Purpose. Head over to maycreate.com, M-A-Y-E-C-R-E-A-T-E.com. Yeah, you heard me right, M-A-Y-E create.com for podcast notes and more resources to grow your business. Don't let your marketing suck. Get your pride on, market with purpose.